Massimo Florio is Professor of Public Economics at the Department of Economics, Management and Quantitative Methods at the Università degli Studi di Milano. And his main research interests are focused on welfare economics, cost benefit analysis, industrial and regional policy, and as the topic of this presentation, uh, the socioeconomic impact of large research infrastructure. Um, again, just to remember uh, the organization of this web seminar, Massimo, you have around one hour to present your slides, um, and then we will have the time, for, we, will, we will have around one hour for question time, both from these participants as well as uh, from the YouTube participants. Uh, before starting, I have to remember that this seminar is recorded. So for all of these participants who don't want to be recorded, please they have to move to the online uh, to the YouTube online web seminar. Uh, so I'm going to share your screen and please mute your microphone. Just give me one second to share your screen, Massimo. Thank you. Can you see the slides? I can see them. Okay, perfect. So the floor is yours. Thank you very much again. I, I hope that uh, everybody can yes, see. Yes, them. yes, we can, we can. Okay, great. Okay, um, so first of all, uh, thank you very much. I think this is uh, not my first visit uh, uh, at the Grand Sasso Science uh, Institute. I have been there more or less on this uh, uh, topic uh, a couple of years ago, but uh, um, um, being here even if uh, just virtually is, uh, is great because uh, on this occasion, I understand there are also PhD uh, students and postdocs, and um, I'll have I love to have this opportunity to discuss with you my, my research. This is not going next, please. This is not going to be uh, M M Martina. Next slide, please. This is not going uh, to be a, a the standard presentation of one specific paper. It is going to be something as an overview of what I have been. Uh, uh, doing uh, uh, um, with uh, with uh, several colleagues and and collaborators in uh, in uh, in recent years uh, on this topic of the the social benefits and costs of uh, research infrastructures. So this is the outline. Next, please. Okay, uh, I will. I would start with, with a definition. This is a definition that you can read in uh, some document by uh, the European uh, Commission. It is rather self-explanatory. Uh, they, they say that the research infrastructure is uh, uh, a facility or a set of resources and services shared by research uh, communities. This is a very uh, broad de definition, it is a little bit more interesting um, in, in the second bullet point when they say that they could be major scientific equipments, knowledge-based resources, for instance, uh, a library is a research infrastructure in this perspective, but they could be also um, digital uh, infrastructures and they could be single-sided, virtual or distributed. In fact, they could be also mobile because uh, a, an oceanographic vessel or a network of uh, satellites for research uh, are uh, um, different from any of these uh, three uh, definitions. The, 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 the point is that they should be able to assemble a critical mass of, uh, of researchers, of, of scientists and, uh, and the students so that they uh, are able through the use of this infrastructure to uh, um, achieve a, a, a substantial production of knowledge. Next, please. Um, next slide, please. Martina, 
Okay, thank you. So uh, these are examples, and uh, as as usual, examples are uh, more uh, indicative than abstract uh, definition. Uh, the Large Hadron Collider at, at CERN, uh, which is the most powerful particle accelerator in uh, in, in in the world, on uh, on the right. Uh, uh, there is a, a view of the International Space Station. Um, but you can also think to uh, technological parks as the one uh, by the European uh, Space Agency in, in Rome, or um, medical research facilities as uh, the uh, National Center for Adron Therapy. Um, bottom uh, right, uh, which is also a, a, a synchrotron, but where uh, particles are used to fight cancer. Next, please. Um, so, why a social cost benefit analysis of uh, of these uh, of these objects? Um, social cost benefit analysis is a, a well established uh, applications of welfare economics and is supported by uh, international organizations such as the European Commission, the European Investment Bank, um, the, the OECD. Uh, there is a recommendation by the European Strategy Forum on Research Infrastructure, which is the body advising uh, the uh, European Union about uh, the um, roadmap for uh, the uh, most important uh, research infrastructure uh, uh, in, 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 in the future to use uh, impact analysis in general and cost benefit analysis particularly. But there is also a lot of tradition in, in individual uh, governments. Uh, for instance, the Green Book by the uh, um, UK uh, Treasury uh, has a long and distinguished uh, tradition uh, with uh, many economists working on it. Next, please. Okay, so what is different uh, uh, in, 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 in the case of cost-benefit analysis from just a narrative of uh, uh, the, the, the social or socioeconomic impact of any kind of infrastructure? We can uh, use these uh, for any kind of infrastructure such as uh, bridges or, or uh, power generation plant or uh, dams uh, or uh, telecommunication facilities is that uh, in CBA, in cost-benefit analysis, you, you, you try uh, to have a model uh, in which uh, uh, on the left side of the equation, there is the net present value of your research infrastructure. Uh, and on the right side, uh, there are uh, the benefits uh, and the costs and you um, simply uh, uh, compute or forecast the algebraic uh, sum of uh, these components. Now, for some reasons that I'm going to explain, the model we have designed for research infrastructure on the cost side that has uh, rather standard uh, uh, variables such as the value of capital, the labor cost of scientists, other staff costs, other operating costs, and any negative externalities, if, if there are such negative externalities. On the, on the uh, benefit side, uh, there are six categories that we are going to discuss one by one. Uh, one is how to uh, value the knowledge output, uh, human capital, technological externalities, benefits to external users, cultural goods, plus something uh, uh, which is something as a mystery, which is the non-use value of uh, the knowledge produced by the, the research infrastructure itself. Next, please. Okay, so uh, related to any of these uh, 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 variables, uh, there are concepts and uh, uh, indicators, uh, but uh, most importantly, uh, there are social groups which are involved. For instance, uh, a research, a, a, a large telescope 
is clearly uh, uh, the big toy of a community of astronomers. Uh, a, a, a particle collider is the big toy of a community of uh, uh, particle physicists. Um, so this is one social group. Um, they attract in these research infrastructures uh, uh, early career researchers such as uh, postdocs, trainees, uh, uh, PhD students, and, and so on. Plus, there are some cultural effects, visitors um, who just spend some time uh, vis visiting the telescope or uh, some scientific facilities. Importantly, there are firms in involved in this story. And as we'll see, there is the general public. Next, please. OK, this is how the model looks, but this is just to give you uh, a, a visual representation of the fact that uh, beyond any of these uh, variables, uh, there is a certain strategy uh, to estimate them. I'm not going to spend time on, uh, on the details uh, of this. Next, please. OK, so uh, let me give you this example. The Large Hadron Collider, uh, if you want to uh, understand what happened, uh, you may uh, have these uh, six categories of, uh, of benefits. Uh, you should integrate the cost uh, since uh, the uh, startup uh, of uh, the construction activities in 1993, forecast what will happen uh, at uh, the shutdown. Uh, which is expected 2038 with the so-called the high luminosity uh, in, in improvement uh, um, of, of, the, of the collider. Uh, you get your integrated benefits. So this and beyond is something that I'm going to explain. And uh, uh, you, you need a numeraire. In this case, it is a Swiss francs. It could be euro, dollars. But uh, in, uh, in applied welfare economics, uh, it could be anything that uh, works. For instance, you can express uh, anything in a unit of time. Doesn't matter. The only point is that uh, you get uh, um, something which uh, you can uh, manipulate uh, with a simple algebra. Uh, because uh, uh, of uh, the um, extensive time period involved in this, uh, in this story, um, you need uh, to um, discount the future and capitalize uh, the past according to which year uh, you are, so that uh, one uh, euro today is similar to, uh, is the same as one euro in uh, 30 years. And to do so, you, you use uh, the usual discounting. In this case, the social discount rate is 3% uh, as recommended by the European Commission for any kind of uh, large scale uh, um, infrastructure. So what ideally we want to achieve, we want to get uh, a result where the net present value is positive. So benefits are more than cost, or uh, if you prefer, uh, the ratio of benefits uh, 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 to costs uh, is uh, more than one. Next, please. Okay, let's uh, start uh, with uh, the uh, knowledge output. After all, uh, uh, these, uh, these uh, uh, infrastructures could be seen as uh, publication factories. Um, scientists are, are there uh, because at a certain point, they are going to publish uh, some kind of, uh, of uh, findings of uh, results of the experiments and, and so on. Um, now, uh, you can think to a, a paper in two very different ways. You can think to a paper uh, in the perspective of its content as a vehicle of knowledge and content. Um, or you can think to a paper as a, 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 an editorial product, as a, you would think to a book, for example, or a, a newspaper. So for some reasons, uh, we, we prefer here to focus exclusively 
on uh, the uh, most trivial aspect of the publication. Uh, and uh, uh, it is the publication per se, without looking at uh, its, uh, its content. The content uh, could be uh, Nobel Prize standard or, uh, or rubbish. Uh, on average, it will be of a given quality, okay? According to the standards of that scientific community. Now, uh, what is the opportunity cost of a, a publication? Uh, the, 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 the simplest way to define the opportunity cost of a publication is the time needed to scientists to produce it. Um, so, um, so if you go uh, th through the marginal cost pathway of valuing uh, this, uh, this benefit, uh, it is quite simple. You, you, you just need some kind of statistics about uh, the salary of scientists and uh, their productivity. Plus there is uh, the, the influence of the paper, which usually is uh, measured by citations. And again, you uh, may uh, have some, some tricks to estimate the value of uh, uh, the time needed to uh, uh, read and, and cite a paper. And you end up with, uh, with that uh, equation. Next, please. In principle, you have a different waves of, of the literature. Uh, and uh, the process is, uh, is uh, cumulative. So you uh, ideally would uh, like to measure all the family of papers generated by the first wave uh, paper or the wave zero paper, which are the papers uh, produced by scientists at the research infrastructure. Next, please. Uh, in principle, you, you may think that uh, you could use another approach, which is uh, uh, looking at, uh, looking at uh, the uh, willingness to pay for an additional publication. As you know, in economics, uh, in an ideal equilibrium, uh, marginal production costs uh, for a good uh, are equal to the marginal willingness to pay, and that's the price. The problem with uh, um, looking for the willingness to pay is that most uh, um, scientific publications are available through subscription, subscription in digital libraries and so on, so nobody really uh, pays uh, for uh, for uh, uh, an individual an individual paper, so it is not very informative the willingness to pay uh, um, indicator. So we, we prefer to stick to the marginal production cost, which, by the way, is uh, as uh, many uh, output by the public sector are mm, routinely uh, measured in uh, in um, uh, national in national accounts. Next, please. Okay, then you can uh, use uh, uh, some kind uh, of uh, uh, strategies to extract this information. For instance, these are uh, figures related to uh, the uh, literature generated by um, four uh, satellites operated by the Italian Space Agency, the Cosmos KaiMed constellation of uh, four uh, uh, satellites for Earth observation. Um, so there is a, a literature uh, generated by this uh, document. Uh, we have identified with some kind of analysis of uh, databases and so on, around uh, 1,200 uh, papers, uh, 13,000 uh, uh, citations. Um, the citation average, uh, the citation median, and, and so on. Next, please. So um, at that point, you, you implement uh, your formula uh, and uh, you get the present value of the publications, the present value of the citations, and um, with different uh, assumptions about how to account for co-authors, uh, you, you get a, a number. Uh, which in this case is uh, something as uh, um, in, 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 in the range of uh, uh, 40 million for this uh, um, uh, earth observation related literature. Now, it is important to stress that this has nothing to do 
with the content of, of the papers. Maybe one of these papers will uh, open a, an entirely new way to look at the planet, but this is not what, what we are counting here, uh, because it, to a certain extent, it will be counted by other uh, indicators. Next, please. Okay, um, now we, we, we shift to um, what probably is one of the most important uh, impact, uh, and it is the human capital formation. The, the previous one, the, the, the impact of the knowledge output uh, uh, ends up usually in, uh, in the case studies we have seen to be uh, relatively small while uh, the, the, the impact on uh, um, learning by, by uh, students and postdoc and uh, in general early career researchers is, uh, uh, is quite, quite, quite large. Uh, how, how this uh, uh, works? Well, ideally uh, you may have a, a, a court and several courts of uh, um, students and young researchers involved the, in the research infrastructures against uh, a counterfactual in which they are not involved in this. And the um, strategy in the economics of education is uh, usually to look whether or not there is a salary premium. Next, please. So what is a salary premium? Salary premium is the fact that because you have been involved in that um, hands-on, uh, um, in, in that hands-on uh, work, uh, you uh, acquire certain skills. For instance, in the case of the Large Hadron Collider, uh, you have acquired some scientific skills, some technical skills, problem-solving capacity, communication skills, and, and, and so on. Um, and this is going to be appreciated in the, in, the, in the job market. The fact that in your CV, you can say that uh, your, your doctoral thesis is the uh, outcome, not just uh, of uh, some in-house work in your laboratory in, in the university, but it has been uh, the result of exposure to a, an international uh, environment in a, in a top scientific infrastructure is appreciated by, by uh, the, the, the market. Uh, in the case of uh, the Large Hadron Collider, we have discovered uh, by surveys of current students, uh, survey of former students, and surveys of, uh, of team leaders with 100 people we have interviewed, uh, and uh, a, an analysis of uh, the literature on returns uh, to education, uh, that uh, the salary premium is uh, uh, seven to 13 uh, percent for each uh, uh, PhD uh, students at, uh, at CERN. Um, so um, this translates in, uh, in, uh, in money, uh, and uh, it is uh, rather substantial because uh, it is a lifelong effect. So it is not just a 7-13% uh, at uh, early career at uh, initial salaries, but it is a lifelong effect. So in, in, in that curve, uh, there is a quantification of this effect uh, uh, until around 2080, it is clearly a a simulation that uh, assumes a number of uh, uh, hypotheses about how many, how many students will be at CERN and, and, and so on. Next, please. Okay, let's go now to the uh, second social group. In a sense, the first social group were uh, scientists and young scientists. Uh, now, let's look to firms. Um, the, the idea here is that uh, there are firms that are uh, uh, challenged by uh, the procurement of research infrastructures. They, somebody has to build the, the, the particle accelerator. Somebody has to build the International Space Station. And uh, these are usually firms. 
Um, and uh, you may uh, either go back to Arrow and the, the famous paper, The Economic Implications of Learning by Doing, where he uh, says that if you have to do something, you learn uh, because uh, uh, you have to uh, solve a problem. By the way, this uh, in macroeconomics was the beginning or one of the beginning of the story about endogenous growth theory. But it is interesting that uh, even uh, Solo, which in a sense was criti criticized um, by the uh, endogenous growth uh, theorist because uh, uh, he was uh, pivotal in uh, establishing uh, the um, e e exogenous uh, uh, role of technical progress uh, in uh, innovation in uh, his uh, neoclassical model uh, of, uh, of growth. Um, um, more recently, um, uh, his, uh, his paper uh, on, on growth theory was uh, in the 50, uh, in 1950s. Um, but more recently, he published something in which uh, he says, what is really important is that the innovation is discontinuous. You have, you have learning with some shocks. In, in learning. Why? Because uh, uh, if, you have, uh, um, uh, if you have learning over time, the uh, returns, uh, uh, as uh, also uh, uh, realized by uh, Arrow, are decreasing over time. So um, it is the surprise that, that matters. Next, please. Now, uh, what uh, kind of implication this has? To, uh, to build the, the Large Hadron Collider, uh, uh, several thousand firms were, were, were needed. You, you can imagine uh, this, this collider with a, a, a um, under, under the ground by uh, 100 meter under, under the ground. Um, it is something as a tunnel uh, 27 kilometers long with a marvel of technology uh, in it. So we, uh, we wanted to see uh, to what extent uh, firms uh, have been uh, learning from uh, that uh, experience. And we discovered a, a number of things. Um, on, on the left, uh, on the left uh, you uh, may see uh, the, uh, the, the impact uh, in terms of profit, uh, which is uh, um, computed as uh, uh, gross profit uh, on, uh, um, on uh, the initial sales plus a multiplier of uh, uh, these sales. Uh, there is a lot of evidence that says that when you work with something uh, really new at the technological frontier, you first learn and then you resell what you have been learning in, in other markets. Um, in the case of CERN, uh, uh, several studies concluded that this multiplier is around three which means that uh, the CERN spends one, the, the, the one euro, the company gets one, but, uh, but uh, the, the total amount of sales, uh, including in other marks, markets, will be three for the firms. So looking at uh, the profits on, on that, you can, you can study uh, the uh, dynamics of this. In this case, uh, uh, on the left, there are two scenarios uh, with, uh, with and without the improvement, the high luminosity improvement of, uh, of the machine. Um, we have studied this in different ways with econometrics, with uh, Bayesian networks, uh, and uh, um, with balance sheet data, and with interviews. Um, involving around 1,000 firms in this. Also, we look at, at patents, and uh, here it is interesting. We have not yet published that paper. It is uh, the graph on uh, uh, it is the figure on the on the right. Uh, uh, it is centered around zero, which is uh, the year where the firms get the procurement contract. And uh, it, it seems we have discovered a statistically significant effect 
of uh, um, a, 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 a after procurement effect on the number of uh, <coughs> patents supplied by uh, uh, filed by by uh, the firm but this takes uh, time takes a lot of time uh, up to eight uh, years after the um, the procurement this is because uh, uh, the firm has been learning but had to invest a lot in research and development to understand how to really um, create something that they can uh, resell in other markets, a new, a new device, a new technology, a new um, software code, whatever. Uh, it takes time to uh, be uh, adapted to other, to other markets. But it is interesting that this effect we think is there if we are able to convince our reviewers in a journal that uh, is uh, now considering that paper. Next, please. Okay, so this is the logical chain of, of the story. There is the procurement event, then there is research and development. In some cases, there are patents. Uh, this has an impact on uh, productivity. And in the end, this has an impact on sales and uh, profitability. Next, please. I'm not going in the detail of this, but uh, um, this is a, a structural model, a system of simultaneous a, a equation, which is based on a framework that in the last 20 years um, is, uh, is rather popular in uh, um, economics of innovation studies. Uh, what we uh, have done here is to modify this framework in such a way that uh, the variable CERN is a, 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 a dichotomous variable uh, where the firm is uh, zero uh, uh, before they get the order and is one after so it is simply a dummy variable there are other ways to do that but in this case it is a dummy variable uh, so this is our variable of interest on the left side uh, uh, this uh, triggers some research in, and development uh, investment by the firm for your, the reasons i have explained and then you have to control for size of the firm for uh, uh, gdp of the country for uh, the, the for inflation, uh, for uh, fixed uh, effects uh, related to time, um, country, um, and uh, other um, invariant uh, observ observables, which are important to uh, get your estimation right. Um, so in the first equation, the procurement event sh shifts the research and development by the firm. In the second equation, the research and development uh, um, by the firm uh, generates a delta and increase in patents. In the third equation, the increase in patents generates an increase in productivity. And the fourth equation, the increase in productivity generates an impact on the performance of the firm, for instance, on uh, its uh, um, habit in a profitability. Uh, in a profitability index. And uh, you uh, estimate simultaneously the system. Well, you can obviously estimate uh, each uh, equation separately, but uh, it is uh, uh, mo more entertaining and uh, nicer um, to, to estimate uh, everything simultaneously. Next, please. These are the, these are the results. <coughs> uh, and um, what is uh, uh, what was good was to discover that uh, we were able to find uh, a, a positive uh, significant effect of the CERN variable of interest in the full sample. But, and this is probably the interesting result, this works only for the uh, high tech uh, firms doesn't work for the non-ITEC firms. But this is exactly what you'd uh, have expected because um, uh, a non-ITEC uh, firm is uh, probably selling to sell 
some of the shelf products, something which is already there without any any particularly particular innovation. So, um, so uh, this uh, difference between high tech firms and non high tech firms is important because confirms the intuition. Next, please. Okay, I will be very quick on this. Uh, uh, in principle, for patents, you can apply uh, the, the same logic of uh, the same logic of uh, the literature uh, in uh, in the first block because uh, there are uh, uh, citations to patents, forward citation, backward citation. Next, please. Um, <clears throat> um, um, this is uh, our study again of CERN uh, with a different model in which uh, we, we study how much time it takes uh, the so-called gestation leg to go from the procurement event to um, patents and uh, as, as you can see in the first year nothing happens in the second year nothing happens in the third year something happens but uh, the, the the most interesting effects are uh, between uh, year five and, and the year uh, seven or year eight. This is the so-called gestation leg of innovation after the event. Next, please. Okay. There is uh, another strategy that uh, you can use uh, to go from uh, uh, the, the literature to uh, the, the impact on, uh, on innovation. This is uh, uh, the Alba uh, Synchrotron near uh, Barcelona. It is uh, a, also a particular accelerator, but in this case, uh, in instead of having uh, the particles colliding, uh, they generate some uh, uh, ultra uh, powerful uh, X rays, and these are extracted uh, in the form of beams and used as uh, microscopes uh, to analyze uh, uh, some samples of uh, molecules of uh, proteins or um, uh, some, some materials that uh, they want to uh, analyze. And there are different teams that rotate every week there to do their experiments. Next, please. Um, Again, you can, uh, you can identify this literature. So you can uh, identify, we have identified in this case, in the web of science, uh, 1,700 uh, papers um, that use the experimental data extracted uh, with uh, these uh, uh, um, photon beams from uh, that uh, um, accelerator. Then you have uh, around 10,000 papers citing those one. And uh, interestingly, uh, you can go in the patent databases and uh, look for the so-called non-patent non -patent literature. Because if you file a patent, you need uh, to mention a previous patent, but if in some in some cases, uh, your ideas are, uh, as an inventor, are related to, to uh, scientific production. You, you need to cite uh, scientific papers uh, that you have used. So we have been able to use to, 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 to find uh, 35 patents directly related to the first wave and uh, 10 times uh, uh, patents related to the, to, the, to the second wave. Next, please. Okay, this is a visual uh, uh, representation of patents uh, citing uh, publications, and uh, you, you, you can use certain kind of uh, algorithms to extract uh, uh, this information. These are the DOI, the identifiers of, uh, of, of the papers in different uh, domains, and, and so on. This is uh, work uh, still going on. We have not yet published it. Next, please. Okay, these are the key findings of this uh, of this uh, <clears throat> uh, research. 
going on, uh, which says that in many cases, uh, you do not have uh, the possibility to identify immediate innovation deriving from, from science, but, um, but uh, you, you may be able to, um, to study a pathway, a trajectory that goes from, uh, from the university teams uh, uh, publishing their empirical results, their experimental results, to uh, the um, filing of patents. And ideally, after that, you would like to see whether the patents have been used and have generated uh, added value and the income uh, to, to the inventors and the firms. Next, please. Next. OK. Now we are uh, uh, going to the uh, uh, less, uh, let's say, less standard things to be, uh, to be seen. Uh, these are the cultural effects. Now, um, every year at CERN, there are more than 120,000 people going there, uh, obviously, if there isn't a, a COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, but uh, in normal times, uh, uh, every day, there are thousands of visitors. Uh, there is a visitor center, and uh, they, 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 they shop around and uh, look to that. So some research infrastructure, in fact, are also promoting a kind of tourism for general public. The most successful one is uh, um, the, um, the, the Kennedy Space Center um, of the NASA, where there are more than 1 million visitors per year. It is uh, similar to a big, uh, big museum. And people can go there and enjoy, um, enjoy exhibitions of uh, rockets and uh, um, they pay something as uh, $40 for the ticket to be there. And uh, I think that with a special ticket, they can also have a dinner with an astronaut. You can imagine this is very, very, very American. I mean, they, 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 they are very good at uh, marketing uh, their uh, achievements. Okay, um, uh, how to uh, uh, understand the, the social value of this? Well, we, we have a tradition in cost-benefit analysis that uh, basically says that uh, if you want to visit something, uh, if you want to travel and visit something, the value to you uh, uh, shouldn't be less than the cost of your travel, okay? This was uh, uh, studied for the first time for uh, uh, national parks in the in the United States. You have these wonderful uh, national parks as Yellowstone or the National Sequoia uh, Park. You go there, you don't have to pay a ticket. So what is the value for you of, of being there? Well, it could be not less than the cost to you to, to go there. So in the case of CERN, we have uh, uh, computed the cost for different kinds of visitors arriving from the different zones. Next, please. Plus, people today, as we are doing now, instead of physically moving uh, in, in the space, uh, in the physical space, uh, move in the virtual space. So there are social media users of, uh, of uh, CERN, there are website visitors, and there are the traditional mass media. There is an impact of uh, these uh, infrastructures uh, on, uh, on the large public. For instance, when uh, gravitational waves have been detected for the first time, it has been, uh, uh, it has been estimated that around the 1 billion people were um, reached by the news either through uh, television broadcasting or uh, other traditional media, plus, plus all those one in, uh, in the website. So again, uh, there is an opportunity cost, there is a value of time of being informed. So even if uh, you have spent uh, two minutes or three minutes to um, know that the gravitational waves with a couple of black holes, uh, of black holes uh, colliding uh, uh, somewhere in the distant space. Even if you have invested just few, 
a small number of minutes on, on, on that, but a billion people uh, did that, this has a value. Next, please. So this uh, is, uh, in the case of, of, of CERN, uh, the, in the pie, there are the, the shares of uh, different, uh, of different uh, moods. The, the, the blue are, uh, the blue part of the pie are the personal visits that go there. There is the, the globe, the, the, uh, the globe of science of innovation, but there are all the other uh, aspects, uh, um, and we expect uh, that uh, both they will increase. For instance, the CERN has uh, announced that uh, with uh, funding uh, uh, by uh, Fiat Chrysler and uh, with a project by Renzo Piano, they will create a large science park uh, close to CERN because currently they have more than 300,000 people applying to visit uh, this but the capacity is just, uh, as mentioned, 100,000. So they, they, they are investing in this outreach uh, activity uh, that have uh, uh, value. Next, please. And, and here is uh, the, perhaps a little bit more, uh, 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 a little bit uh, 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 something uh, really new to you, uh, probably. Um, and this is the, the notion of a non-use value. So if you are a scientist, you're happy with research infrastructure because you can publish. If you are a student, uh, you are happy because uh, your salary, your job opportunities will increase. If you are a firm, you are happy because uh, um, either you get a contract and, uh, and subsequent contracts uh, uh, elsewhere, uh, or because at a certain point there will be certain um, innovations. If you are a visitor, you are enjoying uh, your, your uh, experience. But what about those who are not visiting the CERN, are not scientists, are not uh, uh, managers or owners of, of firms. So what about us, the general public? Now, the example there is uh, a whale. Now, a whale is, as you know, a, a species uh, uh, at risk of extinction. So it is protected. Most countries uh, uh, have uh, um, bar the, uh, the, the chasing or fishing uh, whales. Um, so they are protecting, they are protecting them. Why they are protecting them? And, uh, and uh, what is the value of protecting uh, whales or of protecting pandas or of protecting the tropical forest? There are two possible answers to, uh, to, this, to this question. The, the first is the so-called quasi-option value. This is a, a, a rather complex concept initially, um, initially uh, suggested by uh, Crutil and others in the United States and later on by Arro and, and Fisher. This quasi-option value has to do with uh, the concept that uh, if you destroy something irreversibly, uh, you miss the opportunity to learn, uh, to learn something. So if you destroy the tropical forest uh, to, to sell the wood, uh, the, the, the logs, you get some profits, but you destroy forever a unique environment. And perhaps in that environment, there were uh, some, there were some precious uh, biological uh, species, some biodiversity that we discovered that uh, has uh, an, an, an use. Uh, you may try to have a, a, an empirical estimation of this, but the problem is that in the case of science, uh, the point is not about protecting whales, it is about discovering that whales exist. So we don't know that the Higgs boson exists. We, we may have a paper written by 
Peter Hicks in the 50s that says, uh, okay, yeah, I think that uh, there, there should be a, a, a strange boson there, um, but uh, that's just an, 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 an hypothesis. And uh, so Exante, uh, Exante, you don't know. You don't know how to attribute a value to that. So we, we made the, the rather radical assumption that uh, that knowledge, knowledge uh, doesn't do any harm. So the option value is uh, uh, non-negative, but unknown. And uh, uh, we simply get zero for that. But you can have a value of uh, a will uh, in, in another uh, perspective, that is the so-called existence value. You are just happy to know that uh, the whale is protected. Why? Well, because you think uh, uh, it, is, uh, um, it is an insurance for the future of humanity to protect uh, some species or uh, some environment. Uh, as you know, the panda is uh, the, 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 the symbol of uh, the uh, WWF, the, the World Wide Life Fund. And there are people who pay to protect the panda, not because they are wanting to eat the panda. They do not want to visit a, 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 a zoo where a, a rare panda is, but just to know that it is protected. Now, the question is, uh, does this may apply also to uh, science? Next, please. So we performed the, uh, uh, some examples, some experiments. Uh, this is the example of uh, a so-called the contingent valuation experiment in, in Swiss where 1,000 of uh, um, one a sample uh, representative of the uh, um, citizens of Switzerland, where the survey is, uh, is located, uh, were uh, asked in some form that I will show you uh, what they think about uh, uh, investing their money through taxes to fund future expansion of, uh, um, of scientific, fa scientific facilities at CERN. So we, we try to have a well-balanced sample. Next, please. We asked questions about the interest of the respondents, uh, for instance, uh, whether they are interested in the environment, uh, in politics and society. And uh, as you can see, uh, they are not particularly interested in physics, as you may expect, two thirds uh, say, I'm not interested in, in, in in physics. Um, however, we can ask them, are you interested in general in scientific research? And we may have more positive uh, uh, answers on that. Next, please. Then you can try your experiment. This experiment is based on a, a huge literature on contingent valuation experiment. In this particular case, we divided the, the uh, sample in uh, two subgroups. In the first one, we had a, a referendum-like, uh, in both we had a referendum-like um, uh, um, question in which uh, we asked them, are you happy, for instance, uh, uh, letter C, to pay um, 30, uh, 30 Swiss francs per year of additional taxes uh, uh, for a certain scenario, which is an expansion of, of uh, CERN against uh, another scenario, which is, uh, let's think as uh, they are. If they say no, you can test whether they are happy with uh, paying 15. If they say ye yes, you can go uh, on a higher bid, uh, 75. We, we divided each of the group in uh, one subgroups of 100 respondents. In the first one, uh, we uh, uh, told them, we gave them the information 
that uh, uh, the actual implicit taxation is a six. In the other one, uh, this was blind. Next, please. This is more or less uh, how uh, it, it, it works. There was also a follow-up question with the maximum amount they are willing to pay. Next, please. Okay, and this is the result. This is uh, the, 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 the distribution. There are a number of yes and, and no. Um, next, please. And this is, uh, this is the result. Uh, the estimation is with different models, so I'm not going to go in the details, but the interesting result is that the, the, the willingness to pay is uh, substantially higher in the case of Switzerland compared with the taxes with no statistical differences between uh, giving them the information or not giving them information about how much they actually, uh, how much they actually uh, pay. So we got these two distribution with two different models, but uh, the, the important thing is uh, basically that uh, uh, people are happy to know that scientists create knowledge, even if they do not know what kind of use this knowledge uh, uh, has and how it changes their life. Next, please. Okay, this is something I have already Mention. There is no statistical difference between the two distribution. Next, please. And these are the determinants. So you can study uh, what kind of variables uh, um, uh, influence uh, the, the, the answer. Clearly, uh, if you are richer, more educated, with uh, greater scientific interest, all of this has an impact. Uh, if uh, um, you go ahead with your bid, uh, because in fact uh, it is a shadow price, it is an implicit price, this uh, has a negative effect. And family size has also a negative effect because family size is uh, inversely correlated to a number of characteristics of the respondents, such as income again and so on. Next, please. Okay, then we can sum up everything. And when you sum up uh, all of these estimates, in the case of the Large Hadron Collider, you get a net present value of uh, 3.4 uh, billion uh, Swiss francs, which means that the benefit cost ratio is uh, more than one because the benefits are 25.7 and the costs are 20. 2.3, and you can uh, treat uh, this uh, um, information as, as a stochastic with a Monte Carlo uh, random extraction of uh, values of the different uh, of the different vari variables. In fact, in the model, you can have uh, as many as variables you want uh, uh, as uh, as stochastic, and then you uh, combine everything. Uh, in such a way that instead of having a net present value, you have a distribution. Next, please. And in, in that case, uh, you can uh, compute you can compute the uh, probability of uh, uh, having a net present value less than uh, than zero. This was uh, after uh, fifty thousand Monte Carlo runs. Next, please, and I think I have uh, finished. Okay, so these are some of the places where we have uh, published this, this thing. Uh, the first one is uh, my book uh, published at the end of uh, 2019, in which I uh, mentioned all this approach of the social cost benefit analysis of research infrastructures. And then there are papers in different journals in different places. Okay, I think I have consumed uh, uh, all my time and uh, I would be happy to um, answer any question or uh, uh, get your um, reactions. Thank you, Massimo. Thank you for this very interesting presentation. And I think that it is always a pleasure to attend your seminar. I personally have a general question, but I prefer to now to give the floor to the others. 
So if you have questions, please um, switch on your, your microphone. And now you have the time for your question. So in, I can start with my question that is uh, a general one, uh, because uh, as you know, I worked on, uh, on this topic and uh, with Paolo Castelnovo and so on and so far. Um, my general question is, what about the future? So I mean, which kind of uh, future research avenues uh, do you see in this specific topic and which kind of suggestion do you have for younger researchers studying the social impact of large research infrastructures? Do you want me to uh, uh, answer directly or do we want to wait for other? I think that we can, you, you can answer directly. Okay, uh, next, uh, next to research avenues. Uh, um, well, there are a number, uh, I mean, Personally, I am very fond uh, about the idea of uh, explore social attitudes. So uh, repeating contingent valuation uh, experiments with different experimental settings in different countries with different kinds of research infrastructures. I'm not sure that, uh, uh, for instance, a research infrastructure for uh, cancer therapy uh, would have the same, the same kind of attitudes compared with uh, telescopes or, or oceanographic vessels, vessels and, and so on. So uh, the only problem is that uh, uh, if you are a young researcher, you, are, you, you, you need to be smart enough to get uh, a, a large budget because uh, it, it costs a lot to do this kind of, because you need to recruit representative samples. Okay, so my first uh, attempts we, were with students. But when I, I sent this to the journals, they told me, well, I, I have been published to uh, a couple of papers uh, using uh, students. Uh, but uh, the typical reviewer will tell you, okay, but these are students, uh, what about the, the normal taxpayers? Okay. So uh, you, you need a budget uh, of uh, uh, some 10,000 uh, euros for each of these experiments. So it is not the easy thing. If you want to, if you want to do this in uh, in uh, several countries, uh, you you need uh, a large budget, probably in the range of hundred thousand. Uh, the second uh, research avenue is uh, uh, on on technology. Um, these technological pathways. These uh, mechanism that goes from science to technology to uh, income of firms and so on. This is the second one. The third one on which I am working currently is uh, the, uh, the, the impact on social justice. To what extent the knowledge generated by these uh, large scale uh, uh, projects uh, is fairly distributed in the society or is appropriated by uh, oligopolies. And uh, uh, a well-known example is the fact that CERN invented, at CERN it was invented the uh, World Wide Web. It was donated. And, and now seven out of 10 uh, of the uh, top companies of, of the world are in fact uh, uh, internet companies uh, such as Amazon, Google uh, and, and so on and um, and the and, uh, and probably well this is a very controversial issue but probably they contribute to inequality so in a sense in a sense, CERN donated the web in the form of open science, and, 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 and the result is Jeff Bezos, which is, uh, who is uh, um, currently the richest 
men of the world, thank you also to the pandemic, because everybody is buying it through Amazon. Okay, thank you very much, um, Massimo. Uh, also, Sandro has a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much for this overarching and very interesting talk. It was really helpful to me and, and I think also to the other participants. Uh, I, I have to apologize, but uh, I mean, as a panelist, I can do whatever I like with all the others. I can lower and higher hands, but not playing with my own hand. This is really, really strange, but um, I, I, I can just see, for example, that there's another question from uh, Grand Sasso generic attendee, I don't know, maybe he, he or she can raise his or her question later on. Uh, I have two, uh, two questions or maybe comments. <laughs> one uh, is maybe quite general, and the other one is instead a bit more specific on the one of the uh, very interesting empirical applications that you showed towards the end of the presentation, right? So the first general question uh, has to do with um, the geography of uh, these impacts. So you, you are pretty aware of the fact that uh, we, we are an institute which actually plays with, with, with geography, regional science, and then to us, whatever we investigate needs or is expected to have a territorial impact, right? So uh, my very first question is a question actually that has been supported by a PhD students who is working on this. Uh, that is, uh, can we claim or can we expect that, that research infrastructures, right, have local impacts or territorial embedded impacts which are somehow larger than those that they can have on a global scale. Because this, these infrastructures are, are thought to have, you know, a quite broad impact on the society and the economies. But we wonder, and, and this actually could, could motivate the research, whether uh, we could have sort of a more direct impact on the, on the territory, on the place where they are themselves based. And so we, where, where the geography of the territory where this infrastructure are settled down, can vehiculate more fluently and more directly their impact. That this is the general question. And if you want to, uh, I can stop and raise the second question later on, if you prefer. No, please go ahead with the second one. So that in the meanwhile, I think how to answer. Right. Uh, <laughs> no, the, the, the second question is, is a bit more specific. Uh, and, and refers to that paper or that empirical exercise where you have used those system of simultaneous equation to see the impact of CERN on R&D, then R&D on innovation, innovation, productivity and, and, and performance, right? This is the uh, Facebook CDM model uh, 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 with which I'm quite familiar because I, I, I work quite extensively, I've been working extensively on that. And I, I was wondering whether maybe in future research could be interesting to span and extend that model by plugging an additional equation before that of R&D, which actually account for CERN itself. So basically putting a, an exact equation before that of R&D, which account for the genesis, the location, or, or the amount of whatsoever uh, of, of, of CERN. Uh, because I'm afraid that that could be a, a sort of re reverse causality in the first equation between between R and D and CERN. They they could be uh, simultaneous if you think that uh, research and development could help us absorb the capacity for explaining CERN. And and then and, and plugging an additional equation could be attenuate uh, this problem. Maybe. Okay, I will uh, I will answer in uh, the, the the second the second question first. Um, let me um, uh, as as uh, as you have noticed, this is uh, uh, an extension of uh, the the standard uh, Carpon du Guay MRS uh, model. The extension is uh, that uh, the trigger is the procurement event. Okay, so. So it combines the uh, framework of the procurement, uh, um, uh, procurement for innovation literature, which is a large literature about the impact of uh, uh, public procurement 
uh, when there is an innovative content with that other uh, framework. Now, um, in our model, uh, the CERN variable is a firm level variable. So, so fir firm number 375, um, um, for many years, we, we, to do this, you need as many years as possible. For many years, uh, was not uh, involved in, in the, in the CERN uh, supply chain. At a certain point, they got the contract. So it shifts from zero to one. This is just because it is a dichotomy of variable. You can a little bit uh, work on that instead of this, uh, you might have a zero. And then the amount of the order over time and so on, you, you, you can do this. Now, um, in, in, in this pe perspective, uh, I don't see there is a reverse causality because uh, the, the, the separation of the before after is uh, quite clear. What you are, uh, um, what you would want to see is uh, whether the, the CERN itself is there or, or not. Now, the problem uh, uh, with this is that uh, um, for, for some of the very big research infrastructures, uh, they are so unique, they are so unique uh, that you, you don't have enough variability because we do not have uh, enough CERN in the world to uh, introduce this as a variable, right? So there have been colliders in the world. One, one was in the United States at, at Fermilab, um, and another one was also there. Uh, there is now just a discussion about having uh, one in China, but the problem is that uh, uh, in certain fields uh, you have too few observations. But uh, I can follow you uh, for uh, perhaps in other, in other domains. For instance, in astronomy, uh, the number of telescopes is, uh, is, is larger uh, if you include optical telescopes. So you can, you can go back to Galileo Galilei and uh, <laughs> looking. So in principle, if you have the data, you can go back uh, from Galileo Galilei to uh, our times and having your value. So if you want to um, do that, uh, that, that would be interesting. Um, okay, on, uh, on, uh, uh, on uh, uh, the more uh, general question on geography, um, I, I, I didn't try. It was, uh, it was uh, often asked me to try to do so uh, by the CERN itself, uh, mainly for political reasons, because they wanted to, <laughs> they wanted to show to Switzerland and France that, they, that, that there are uh, uh, territorial impacts uh, and, and so on. Now, uh, I'm sure that such impacts are there. Uh, um, but here it is true that you might have reverse causality because usually where you put this infrastructure is not random. Uh, so uh, so uh, probably in some cases they have an impact, a local impact, because they are in the right place to have a local impact. Um, but in principle, I agree that with a, a, a sample of different research infrastructures in different fields, you can try and see whether there are local impacts uh, in the different categories, attraction, attraction of scientists, of students, of visitors, firms, and, and so on. So a bit of uh, geography of uh, large scale science in principle, is possible. You you are welcome. Try. No, I mean, as, as I told you, there, there's a PhD student of ours, Leonardo Vargio, who, who is actually here, as far as I see. It's actually we would like to see well several things about the big science infrastructure, in particular about this one. Whether whether there's a, a geography 
in the impact in, in the social e socioeconomic impact of this infrastructure and and i think it's, it's quite challenging and difficult for the same reason that you mentioned before that there could be a reverse causality and then this is quite difficult to single out a genuine impact which is actually due to the installment of that infrastructure and not the precondition for the structure itself mm -hmm. so I, I think that I mean, it's, it's interesting, but, but, but quite challenging. Okay. Any, anything which is not challenging is not fun. So we, <laughs> great challenge, great fun. Okay, I think that there is another question. So I can't see the, the name because I, can, I read Grand Social Science Institute. So uh, please take your question. Ciao, Nando. Hi, Nando. Uh, Massimo Nando is the previous president of the EINFL. Yeah, I know him. Okay, you know, he knows me. I was, uh, I, I, I was, uh, um, I was interested in the in the poll you conducted in, in Switzerland about the impact. Well, about whether people are willing to pay some taxes for for research. Now, I find that, that poll at the same time interesting, but a lot of. Uh, I mean, one of the most biased that they could think of. First, CERN is the largest infrastructure in the world. Research in fact. Second, Switzerland is the richest country in Europe, except Luxembourg, that doesn't count anything, well, except for capital investment and other stuff. And third, uh, I mean, uh, Switzerland is also a small country with two of, out of the probably best five universities in Europe. So, I mean, science in Switzerland is, is a concept that is... Uh, probably not, not at large. Now, would be uh, possible to replicate that things, for example, in France with, with a function, which is also one over R. I mean, people, does people in, in Burgundy uh, think the same of CERN as in, uh, as in the province of Ronald? I mean, something, something like this, this is first. And second, uh, would would be possible to, to do it, I mean, if you want would do it for something like a big infrastructure, big on, on, on the Italian scale, of course, like, like Grand Sasso, it should make sense to do it in Abruzzo first, or you would do in Italy at large. And, and for example, if you do it in a, in a reasonably poor country like Chile, Chile is one of the largest, more, some, yeah. or the, out of the most, biggest infrastructure in the world. What, what people think in Chile, and does even uh, part of the population in Chile knows about it? Okay, that's my question. Very, very good question. And uh, I have a, a, an excellent uh, answer to the first one because we did an experiment in France. Ah, okay. <laughs> so I didn't mention uh, uh, that one, but uh, uh, before Switzerland, we tried in France with the same technique. Uh, 1,000, uh, uh, a sample of 1,000 uh, uh, taxpayers and so on. The results uh, have been published recently in the journal PLOS ONE, uh, but uh, in, the, in, in a nutshell, the results were, as you expected, uh, less uh, uh, optimistic than uh, in Switzerland. So the absolute uh, level of the willingness to pay was uh, lower. Than, than in Switzerland. Uh, around 49% of the respondents uh, were uh, below our threshold, so we consider them as a zero willingness to pay. But uh, even so, and even in a rather uh, complicated and large country as France, uh, the, the, the ratio between the actual implicit tax and the willingness to pay is, uh, uh, well, the, 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 willingness, the, impli the, the willingness to pay as revealed by the experiment uh, ratio of the actual um, contribution to CERN is something as uh, 1.4. 1, 1. So, uh, so the, the, the result of the experiment was positive even for France. Uh, as, as I told you, these experiments are, are rather costly. Uh, ideally, uh, one would like to repeat them for different member states of, uh, of the CERN. Uh, 
uh, and 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 look what uh, would happen uh, even in uh, in other countries. But uh, let me insist uh, about the intuition behind uh, the the this. The the intuition is that sometimes, as you know, uh, scientists uh, tend to think that. Uh, um, uh, that uh, people, because they do not understand what they do, would react uh, negatively. Yeah. So, uh, so what we have discovered, this, this was the first time that this was uh, done for, for science, is that uh, uh, both in France and in Switzerland, the answer was uh, positive. I, I would be very happy to repeat this, for instance, in a country as Poland or, or Spain, which are not so close to sell and look uh, to what happens. And Grand Sasso. Grand Sasso, I don't know whether for the Grand Sasso Science Institute itself, but certainly no, for, the laboratory. for the neutrino facility. You, you yeah, know. yeah, the laboratory. Exactly. Uh, my answer is definitely yes. I will try. You see, Massimo, my, my question was because I always claim, or I, I was used to claim with minister or other authorities, that we are much more popular than they think. I mean, that when we talk about science, people are much more interested than mm -hmm. normally is, is, uh, is assumed by, by media. However, uh, without a quantification, uh, my argument is uh, very, very, very much debatable. I mean, they say, OK, that's your opinion. We feel that uh, if we invest more money in, in this other sector, it would be better for our re-election. You know, I mean, the, the story. So uh, I think uh, this is a pr promising line, but it should be should be pursued uh, in, in different uh, environments in different countries. I, I, yes, I, I, I agree with you. The, it should be tested in different countries in these uh, different environments and so on. Uh, my 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 feeling is this about the your more general point in the relationship with the politicians. Uh, um, it looks as the, the similarity is with the, the panda story, okay? So you may think that panda are just of interest for zoologists, but this is not true. Well, pandas are cute, that's the problem. <laughs> so <laughs> panda, the panda are easy, uh, not, not, not necessarily to be seen, but they are, easy, are easier to be sh shown than a neutrino, right? Yeah, <laughs> but 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 if you look, we we did an analysis about how many people go in YouTube to look to um, uh, black holes, um, even uh, even uh, YouTube representations uh, uh, of supersymmetry, something that even many physicists do not understand what what it is, YouTube. and there are millions of people going there. So this is the point, is trying to, uh, 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 to understanding the social attitudes in a rigorous way with some kind of rigorous experiment. And because these experiments were done, uh, particularly in the United States and in other countries, as there is such intelligence. I want to conclude like that. Of course, the panda effect is very clear to me. I mean, pandas, koalas, uh, and uh, there are a few other cute animals that uh, everybody wants to save. Now, try to do the, the, the same thing with three uh, horrible animals that nobody wants or they are scared of, and tell them that they are on the way of extinction and see if the effect is the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, so. Well, on this, on this, there is a literature. There is a literature on uh, wildlife conservation and. Um, conservation of species and, and, and so on. The, the important point is not the fact that the people want to see them, but want to uh, protect them. Mm -hmm. Even if they do not want to go necessarily in the tropical forest <laughs> to, to, to physically. Oh, you do is enough. Uh, but uh, it, it is uh, the so-called existence value. They are happy to know that the species exist. Okay. So, so science, is about revealing that something exists. So if people get this message, um, we, can, we can see. So it is empirical. One has to uh, look to the social okay. media. Thanks, Matthew, indeed. Thank you.
Thank you, Nando. Thank you, Massimo. There is another question from Adriana. Please. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. Thank you so much. Uh, I was, uh, I, of course, there is the time, so I, I was uh, curious about if during the experiment, do you measure trust, the trust of mm -hmm. people, like trust on people, trust on politicians, mm -hmm. uh, because I don't know exactly on this field, but generally trust is uh, very correlated with the willing to pay and at the same time with this issue of, uh, mm -hmm. of this world of research, because if you don't know uh, the research world or uh, for example, the field of physics, I don't know if there are differences on the way the people see or have trust in different fields. For example, maybe you have more trust on uh, uh, something which is medicine and less trust in, in, for example, artificial intelligence that the professor present to us, how people doesn't trust on artificial intelligence. So, or give more, uh, say like, okay, you know, uh, people can take mistake, uh, machines no. So are more severe with, against machines than against people. So I was asking if you already have that as a, as a variable and sense of belong to the sense of yes in the, in in the questionnaire in the questionnaire we had uh, uh, several variables exactly to uh, look into their attitudes and so on for instance uh, uh, there, there were people uh, who um, mentioned that they were not willing to pay anything because they distrust government exactly exactly yes they distrust government uh, or they distrust uh, science we we know that this is uh, uh, something that exists in our in our society, so uh, it is it is important in this kind of uh, contingent valuation experiment to uh, to test uh, for this. But at least in in our two uh, experiments in France and in Switzerland, it was a, rather a, a minority of of of, of, of this. Of the, of, of the sample expressing these, uh, these attitudes. Maybe as you were saying, by the type of population of the participants that are you were using, or you have you seen, uh, the participant had made experiments. Uh, the use are like uh, dif different age, yes. uh, graphical uh, uh, yes. education. So there was no difference in some of these variables. Uh, yes, yes. We, 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 first of all, the, the, sample, uh, um, the sample was uh, extracted, uh, we, we used the two uh, companies specializing in uh, this kind of uh, research on attitudes. Um, there, there, there was a competition to select the companies. By the way, we had to um, uh, ask for the approval of uh, the uh, ethics uh, committee of the University of Milan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, yeah. Well, I mean, they, they considered this as an experiment with humans. So, so we, a number of ethical issues and so on. But yes, we have uh, the possibility to analyze the subsamples, uh, for instance, uh, the attitudes of uh, young against the attitudes of uh, the old. The, the, the econometric estimate is, a, a, a multi, is in a multivariate setting. So you have the coefficient for each of these, um, of these okay. variables in, okay. in the model. Uh, the, the, published paper is, uh, uh, the published paper is in, in plus one and it is uh, open access and uh, I can send you. Yeah, Martina, the, the yeah, reference. Yeah. It, is, it is just published. We have submitted to another journal the, the Swiss example, and there is something in my book about uh, how to do this. Yeah, thank you, Professor. Thank you. And Massimo, there is another question from Maria Giovanna, but she can't switch on her microphone. So I read the question. Um, she has, why in literature there are uh, more studies focused on the impact on single research um, infrastructure and not on aggregated impact of more research infrastructures? Well, the answer is, first of all, because uh, uh, 
I, 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 I would be rather bold because I am the first one that uh, has opened the way to this uh, kind of study. So it is, uh, uh, we, we just started uh, five or six years uh, ago. Um, so it is a very uh, recent uh, field. I, I, there is a, a 100 years experience uh, on the cost benefit analysis of uh, infrastructure in general, but it is just five or six years of experience with, with uh, research infrastructures. Um, but the second point is uh, a little bit more um, difficult. And uh, it is that uh, um, Ideally, you would like to have a sample of research infrastructures. Um, mm, this is not easy to have. I, I hope in future that uh, the case of uh, ALBA, which is uh, a, a synchrotron light source and is part of a club of other synchrotron light sources uh, in, in Europe, uh, could uh, uh, be helpful to have some kind of uh, uh, comparative analysis uh, with, uh, with other similar infrastructure. I mean, all of them has, uh, in fact, uh, differences. Uh, they may have uh, different beam lines and so on, but they, the technology and the physics, uh, as far as I understand, is, uh, is similar. You can do that with some kind of telescopes. Uh, you can certainly do that with uh, genomic platforms. The genomic platforms are uh, uh, the, the places where you analyze uh, the, the genome of a species. They are based on uh, machines uh, which were invented after the Human Genome Project. And, uh, and there are different places in the world where there are these uh, genomic uh, platforms. So I would be very happy if, uh, if uh, there are uh, this kind of compar com comparisons with different things. Clearly, if you uh, look at uh, rather unique uh, facilities, uh, another example are, uh, is uh, adron therapy. There are different adron therapy centers. Again, there are synchrotrons and there are a number around the world in Italy, in, sorry, in, uh, not, not just in Italy, but uh, in other European countries, in the United States, Japan, and, and so on. So, yes, yes, definitely this is something to be done in future. Okay, thank you very much. I think that we don't have more questions. Just wait some, some minutes. Okay, okay. Thank, okay. You very much. I, thank you very I, much. I, I, I will. I, I, I'm very happy of this conversation. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the questions. Uh, it was also for me a very good rehearsal because uh, on Friday I have a short presentation at the CERN Council uh, with, uh, with, uh, uh, with these uh, findings. So it was also a, a good rehearsal. Uh, for me to, to present. But in that case, uh, I have just uh, 15 minutes to present to the CERN Council what we have found. So I, I will need to collapse the argument even, even more. But thank you for, for very much for your attention and for your questions. And uh, please, uh, if uh, some of the PhD students or the colleagues have uh, uh, further questions or of interest, in the last slide, there is my email and uh, I, I would welcome any any follow up. Right. Thank you very much, Massimo. Thank you, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Massimo, ci vediamo domani noi, virtualmente Grazie, ci vediamo sì, anche domani. domani. Domani alle 11 andiamo, andiamo, domani alle 11. Okay. andiamo avanti per, per fare le cose. Eh, esatto, esatto, future research avenues. Esatto, esatto. <ride> Grazie mille.